Maje we tu ni ke we ali 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 Maje we ni ke we ali Maje we tu 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 ni ke Maje we tu ni ke we ali 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 Maje we tu ni ke think the Thule represents for, for the Pomo? What does it mean well, to you individually? And mainly, to okay, it, it was really two purposes. Number one, it's a food. Food? We, we ate the Thule. Really? Yeah, you eat the, you don't eat the whole Thule, you eat the bottom end. The, oh, okay. The big end here. Yeah. When they're in season, and you can tell when they got flowers on the top. Uh -huh. If they don't have a flower on the top, they're not ready. But once they flower, you pull them, and then you peel them. And it basically has white meat in it. On the inside? Like, yeah. And you peel it, and it only goes down about that far. To, and it's like, um, the meat would be, like, uh, it, it would be, it's kind of crunchy. Yeah, kind of like, um, kind of like a bamboo shoot. Something yeah, like it's kind of crunchy. And, uh, but, it, but that's what you eat. And you also can eat the root. Yeah. So if you pull the root up, you know, you clean the root off, and uh, it's good too. It's like the same way. Crunchy, yeah, and uh, and, uh, and, it's, and it's good. So, but uh, two of these, we eat two of these, 
and then um, uh, we also uh, use them for making books, you know, like we're doing now. Right. But they made them more elaborate at, uh, in the old days, you know, because they, they used them to go on, on the lake for fishing or get out where they can gather other tools, you know. So they used it as a, uh, it was a boat that they used for all kinds of that's very interesting. How do you think? So you just like get the individual bundles and then like la like lash them all together? Yeah, you bundle them by their size. Like if it's thicker, then you bundle them, and if it's thinner, you bundle them because the thicker are gonna go towards the bottom and the thin go on the side. Uh, okay. Like this girl here with the black with the black shirt and long hair is that your granddaughter? Yeah, that's my she said you taught her how to make the the, the, the tule rafts and everything like that. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Is that typically how stuff gets passed down? Yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah. Uh, where did you learn how to? Did you learn? Uh, well, from a, a, a fellow in the tribal me the okay. way you know how to do it, and he was taught by his his uh, grandfather. We're cousins, uh -huh. so we got the same rumble, but um, his uh, his uh, grandfather and stuff was the uh, root. How do you think the Thule is today? Like, what's the state of the Thule? Do you think it's as healthy as it was in the old days? Do you think it's a little bit more endangered, or do you think things are about the same? Well, it's, um, it's the reality of that uh, we don't have as much of it anymore uh, because. Uh, that's because of all the development. Like, uh, like if, uh, like all of the homes on the water, right? and people bought them. Well, they tore them all out to build boat docks right. and boat ramps and yeah. make beaches and stuff too, because they have absolutely no value to so, none. So, yeah, yeah. It's just the weed. So, they, by them doing that, they've eradicated or destroyed a lot of tule mm. on site, and so it's not as plentiful or uh, probably not as good as they were in the old days because you know, I don't know if they cross pollinate or whatever happened, but uh, they seem to be a lot bigger. They were taller and stronger. Ah, oh, okay. Uh, and now maybe it's just uh, evolution or whatever, but uh, they're like smaller, and shorter. Don't seem uh, quite the same. Are, these are real small. Um, you know, in the old days, these uh, yeah, they, they were real tall. As tall as that. The lake where you can see now what's sticking up there. Now. Yeah. So, um, but um, and that that's uh, that's just a result of uh, development. Yeah. And people building underwater. Protected, 
the charter and impact on the project. I think that um, it has provided an event to come together to to remember the importance of these resources and and to celebrate them and also to connect and network with each other about uh, things that are going on. We've actually folded that knowledge into the Toledo Festival over the years. But Toledo is something to protect. It's something that we can't take for granted. Um, they are something that can't be wasted, and they um, and we need to fight for them to, to continue to be here. And and my experience working in the tribe is you know these types of resources of birds that, that depend on the Tulis and the people that depend on the Tulis. You know we, we have to. To remember that relationship of, of um, the, the things that we do can affect the tool. Um, we can't take it for granted. So the Chili Boat Festival also helps to to bring you know, issues like that to life. Every year we have a different theme. I think they're getting more and more smart though in, uh, in uh, Lake County here and elsewhere because now they're kind of cutting back on people buying lakefront property and, and doing the same thing because uh, uh, if we kept allowing that to happen, all the lakes probably try to cost me. Yeah, it wouldn't have. Yeah. So the county is uh, putting in places that uh, ordinances and stuff to stop big development. Um, just for taking acres and lakes. Yeah, and, that's and, great. And when that that's happens, great. you know, it's not only restricts the Indian use, but all the non-Indian, whatever. And uh, so, um, so uh, that, that's a good thing. Yeah. You know, I, I think because uh, it's the same thing with the ocean, you know, the, over the coast. The, you know, the Coastal Commission and stuff like that. They're right. restricting development and ownership of the coast. You know. That stuff is meant to be enjoyed by the public, I think. Yeah, it, it should be public domain. Yeah, I totally agree with you. Yeah, I just